Capacities? Better than Notion? I don't know. You tell me. You're the one watching the video. You should know. You should know before you watch the video. Just kidding. That's why you're here watching the video about me telling you why Capacities.io could be better than Notion. Getting right into the software itself, it does look a little bit like a mixture between Obsidian uh, Vibes and Tana Vibes and Notion Pages. So, I mean, anytime I see emojis on a page like this with toggle blocks, I think, yeah, pretty much Notion. From a pricing model standpoint, it does have a free version that is very similar from the unlimited spaces, objects, and block setup. And then what you get for premium is task management. Ooh, a annotation and videos. Ooh, okay. This is interesting. So let's uh, let's get started with the free version. It's $12 a month for paying for some of this stuff doesn't make sense to me. Let's make an account. Admin.com. My name is Damn Tree Pasta Sauce. I don't want to be updated. And I'm definitely a CEO. How did I find you? My comment section. <laughs> so funny. I uh, use Notion, that's all I use. Please verify your address. No, sure, fine, whatever. And you're verified, that's cool. So now let's open the application itself. First of all, it does have a desktop app. So just to show you this, something different between Capacities and Notion is that like it has an app.capacities.io URL. So that's something to point out. But for one, the website can be changed between light and dark mode, which is kind of cool. And just a brief overview from the product on this standpoint, it gives me any type vibes and because it's just the connections between emojis, like the graph view with what you have in, in Obsidian, but also Notion. You can get the app for Windows or Mac, and this actually only just came out in December of 2022. So I'll take what I can get. But just taking a look right here, you see on the left, we have the same like pin setup. And you can create a new object type over here, which is interesting. Uh, so if I make a new type here, you'll see that I can start with a template. So for example, it could be a person, meeting, page, all these kind of things, or create my own. Interesting. So let's pick one of these examples. So book and then use this template. Hmm. So what's weird about this is it's almost like a file type that then you put pages into. That's an interesting way of, huh. If I convert this to a tag, what does it do? Not a whole lot, it just kind of changes the properties associated to it. So that's interesting. So let's just say do a new type from, from scratch. Let's call this projects. Create content type, plural of name, projects. Sorry, let's do project and projects. So project one within here, you can add some properties. So the same kind of single and multi-select properties, time and date together, well, icon, sure. Cover image, sure. You can pick linked images that you have that's kind of smart kind of see where we're going with this blocks okay let's open this guy up as a page all right slash yep we got backslash functionality okay do we got markdown let me do one of these yes we can yep you made a block section so this is interesting it's almost like also a mix of coda this text property is interesting here so then if i do tags let's see that we can add some Example tags that exist. Oh, you can pick it from anywhere in the software. Oh, I guess it doesn't trust capacities as an app when I was downloading it. But yeah, you can essentially connect the different properties across. Oh, that's kind of cool. So the tags here, if I were to make more of them, so create new, make an example tag of in progress. Oh, sorry, there already was one. Um, complete, okay. Then I go back to the projects and I assign the tag complete. That is very intriguing. So you're almost able to associate things forward and backward in each entity type. So the images here, you'll see this image was connected to the property of this guy. So that is a different way of thinking about it. You essentially have a bunch of different properties that stack up together in that kind of view. And you can view it in a list, gallery, wall, or table. And now if I go into this project here, it seems like from a block functionality standpoint, I can do it slash to toggle slash to do another slash page within it. Yeah, there's backlinks. It goes right back in there. Um, it keeps the project very interesting, right? Because you can go in it and you can go in it again. So it does really feel like a notion alternative. And the search within it, I do want to check out. So if I do test me out, bro, I'd like to do some search and see if test me out. Yep, it found it. All right. So that proves that the search feature is this low key is a Notion-esque clone, but like with the weird way of viewing it. I don't know how I feel about it. Like for example, we got all these views here, right? List, gallery, wall. And if we go 
and look at this weird graph view scenario. What it's supposed to do is essentially explore the local context of an object by visually all ingoing and outgoing connections. So what might be the most intriguing thing about this is that you can convert the content type as you're working in it. And it's essentially all related in one huge database, if you really think about it. And in the page layout, you can also see the table of content no matter what. So if I make an H1 test, H2 test, see that it does this, it tells you how many words, the linked content to it. So if I, for example, were to Ah, I have to open up the specific thing and find the graph view. Okay, here we go. Click on one of these guys, press graph view. What the heck is this wannabe obsidian, wannabe notion, wannabe town, I wanna be better than notion platform. This is extremely intriguing. If you wanna find out more about this app, make sure to comment down below and then comment about what you think about this video and how to improve your productivity even more.